Hi, here's Albert. I hope that you enjoy the presentation. Excuse my accent, it's a little bit weird. I'm Catalan, so as you can see, English is not my native language, and uh, I will do my best. First of all, let me introduce myself. I mainly uh, specialized in barefoot, so uh, I was the first barefoot trimmer, certified barefoot trimmer in, in Spain, in my country. And uh, I have been right now 13 years working as a, as a perfect trimmer. And um, I also developed uh, two boots uh, that are in the market. One is floating boot and the uh, newest one is uh, EU boot. So um, I mainly know all the troubles and all the issues, all the things, problems and difficulties that you might endure during your daily work. Okay, so let's go. I don't say anything more. Okay, so let's gonna begin with some um, introduction on the business. Evo Boot or Evo Horse SL, it's a very young business. It was founded back in 2015 in Asturias. Asturias is a region in the northern Spain, and you will see in a second how it looks like. As you can see, it's uh, very rainy. It's more or less like England. So it's very green, a lot of forest and a lot of water everywhere and a lot of mountains. So it's a very good place for testing. And this is where the boot has been developed, test and um, produced. I'm not in the northern Spain. I'm in a region called Catalonia. It's on the eastern coast. And um, we also test the products here, which is very good for us because the both environments are super different. So Asturias is wet, wet, and uh, Catalonia is very dry in my region. The main thing that you can find in the floor are rocks, rocks everywhere. These two extremes are very good for us for testing. And uh, we also do some tests in Northern Europe, in, um, in Finland. So um, we make sure that the products that we develop uh, works perfectly well in all the environments. And this is how it looks like in my region. So you can see it's forest, but now it's everything fine and very dry. And uh, it, this is up in the mountains. So it's a thousand meters above the sea level. So uh, there's a little bit more of humidity. Just a close view so you can enjoy a little bit my region. Okay, so now you know when it has been founded your horse cell and uh, where the products are tested. Uh, let me introduce a little bit uh, the team. Um, nowadays, um, there are two directors, me, that you can see in the left, and that I, I already say that in my daily work, I work as a pet specialized in barefoot horses and rehabilitation. And so I do a lot of uh, gluons and pathologies and all this stuff. And uh, so I work a lot with boots and I'm used to work with boots since 13 years ago and uh, I test and try and, and did everything with uh, all the brands and models that are in the market and I still use some of them because one boot will not fit all. So uh, I also use some other boots and at, my, at the right of the presentation you can see Florin. Florian is um, the designer and he is also in charge of the warehouse and the production process. 
this is mainly the board team of the Evo horse. Okay, so how do we, very, very fast, how do we create uh, the products? Mainly just for you to know that we do everything inside our business. So um, Florian or, or I have the idea and then we begin to do some sketches, some drawings in a paper and Florian makes it so in the PC and then it's printed and uh, then we do some home uh, made molds. And with the molds, uh, then we begin to have some uh, products to test. And we, they go through uh, some stress tests and afterwards simply see that everything is working or not, if you have to change something. And um, then when everything is ready to go, we create uh, production molds and then uh, the end product reach the market. This is more or less uh, how the things goes inside our business. And this is a little bit the evolution of our product. At your left, you can see the <laughs> prototype number 200. And this is the beginning of our boot because we did this boot as a development or as an update of the floaty boot. That's why you can see some pieces that maybe you can recognize it. Then we created the first Evo boot that was the Evo boot 1.0. Uh, and then uh, we made the Evo boot 1.19. Uh, back in 2019 and this year uh, we have uh, developed a new update that is the last version of the Evo boot that is 2021. Normally in all, in all the updates we update the boot which means that the same pieces can be can be exchanged so normally the people don't have to buy the whole boot and they can keep the boots up to date by simply buying some new pieces because we have a strong commitment with our clients this is a close view of our latest product the evo boot 2021 just by looking at it if you have not seen before you can realize that there are some differences they are big differences because mainly because you have to think that I'm a hoof expert. As a developer, it changes a lot the way that the boot is designed when you really know things about the, the, about the hoofs. And, and you will realize that in few, in few minutes. So let me go through. Okay. I, I don't want only to speak about Evo Boot. I want also to give you some extra knowledge in case you don't have it. Maybe you know everything that I'm going to talk about, but just in case, I will explain something else uh, above the Evo Boot, okay? So let me explain you and introduce you which are the boot types that um, I describe in my daily basis. I categorize the boot types in four categories. Uh, the first one is the soaking boots. Soaking boots, the function of it are soaking, normally using uh, chlorine or um, an antiseptic uh, to treat thrush or other hoof issues. There are a lot of different brands, models. Okay, the second type is the, is the gluons. There are also some other brands that have gluons and in the same way as other brands do. So normally it's the shell of the boot that acts as a gluon. And I use it for treatments, mainly in founder and also in tendon ligament issues and joint issues. You will see it at the end of the presentation because one of the things that I personally think that it's lacking in the um, barefoot movement is rehabilitation and treating diseases and helping or enhancing the speed of the process. And you will see what I'm talking about at the end of the presentation. And uh, I will share with you how I do it in my daily basis, in my daily work, and um, how can the Evo Boot be used for that purpose. So I also use it in transitions, mainly when the owner cannot wait. So normally in a sport, imagine that you have a, an owner that has a horse, a shot horse that is competing. and. Um, uh, he decides in the middle of the competition season that he wants to take the horses off because he had some issue or problem with the horse and uh, he's expecting some magic. So uh, uh, he calls you and, okay, now take the horses off, but my horse cannot stop. <laughs> okay, then uh, we apply uh, the glue on boots. 
as a, a first step of the transition process. The uh, horse can keep on competing, the owner is happy, and uh, we are beginning to flex, move all the tissues of the hoof. And when the competing uh, season is over, uh, then we take the gluons out and um, the horse seems to touch directly the ground with its own hooves. So this is the second purpose that I use the gluons and also in competitions, mainly in endurance. That's the type of competition that I have worked more. And also with horses that jumps in mud or in uh, loose green grass. Normally we don't use uh, any boot on these conditions because uh, so the studs are applied and with a boot that turning forces are too strong, too risky for the horse and for the rider in these conditions. Also, the third group of the boot uh, that you can find in the market nowadays is what I call the integral boots. Uh, all those boots that goes uh, above the coronet and uh, locks around the pasture. Everything has pro and cons. I use it for some reasons uh, and there are a lot of different uh, boots of this type in the market, as you already know. I mainly use it in uh, treatment because uh, you have good access to the hoof, the horse is comfortable, you can use pads on them, so uh, they work well for all these uh, conditions. And also I use it in transition. I expect that the hooves will change quite a lot because as you know, when, the, when you remove the horseshoes, you expect what uh, we call the horseshoe effect so the hoof get compact, get smaller, but a little bit wider. So the breakover point goes back and everything gets more compact. So if I expect a big change, uh, then I use this type of wood. And as I also, as I already said, I can use a pad on it. Also uh, for, for light riding, some users, some clients uh, or some owners, uh, will simply want an uh, easy solution that can be opened a lot, very easy to feed without any maintenance or anything like this. So for those type of clients that want a super simple and easy solution, then I say to them, okay, you have to go to an integral boot. I will not uh, make you play around a sport boot and kill yourself and also kill me in the process. And the fourth type is the, are the sport boots. There are also other brands that fills into this category. And the sport boots are all the boots that go below the coronet or the main part is below the coronet. And the main pro is that they have a snack fit. Okay. And these are mainly used for riding. As you know, normally these type of boots don't accept pads or accept a very small pad. So uh, our boot right now, the, um, the Evo Boot 2021, or the Evo Boot in all its history, uh, fills in this category. So it's a sport boot, and we are also beginning to um, develop an integral boot for the future. But right now, it, what we have is a sport boot. Okay, so I hope that you understood it properly. If you didn't knew uh, these categories and if you knew it i hope that i could get something uh good on you about it okay so let me let me explain a bit the pros and cons because as i already said there are pros and cons of everything as you can see in the presentation there are some um, things that are on green which are the pros and some things that are in red which are the Cons. So, soaking boots, normally I only want the client or the owner to apply the products and they can choose the type that they like more. And if not, normally the type of that you see in the screen is what I use in my day to day. So, the glue on boots. Glue on boots, which are the pros of the glue on boots? The main pro is that you don't have rubbing. You don't have any risk of rubbing, zero. Why? Because you don't have any part of the boot that goes above the horn. So you don't have any part of the boot touching the skin. Why is this good? This is good mainly when you have a horse that has to wear the boots 24-7 and uh, has a sensitive skin. Or if you have a horse that uh, is going to compete in an uh, in endurance race above 90 kilometers, and the owner don't want to risk of rubbing because of the sweat and water that will go into the hooves. 
and also you don't risk of losing. So if you do the process well, which is quite easy, and I'm quite sure that you know how to glue on a boot, and normally with the Evo boot glue on, I reuse it four times, and in cycles of one month and a half, or as much as two months per cycle. So then I take it off, I clean it, and I glue it back. So it's a super resistant material, it lasts for long. And also it's the version of all of those that gives the maximum comfort to the owner and to the horse. Why to the owner? Because they simply forget about anything related to the hoops. As you know, there are some players that they don't want to be watching if they wear the boots or not, or they don't want to be uh, playing around the hoofs. So on those situations, this might be a good option. And also is the most comfortable version of all for the horse, at least in my point of view, because it's the lightest version and it doesn't interfere in the pasture movement. There's nothing that touches the skin. So from my point of view, it's biomechanically the best version of all the three type of boots that the horse can wear. Okay, but uh, everything cannot be so perfect. So there are some cons, obviously, and the main con is that it can promote the thrush if you keep on using them a lot and it can weaken the wall if it's a little bit weak. Uh, related to uh, some diet issue or some hygiene issue. So this is a big con of this solution. Also a con, <laughs> at least for the owner of the horse, is that it has to be applied by a pro, which means that it's expensive. And mainly it's expensive because uh, the owner has to pay the glue, that it's also expensive by itself, but also the experience and the time of the trimmer or the professional. Those are the cons of the glue on boot. Let's go to the pros and cons of the integral boots. As you can see, there are a few of them. So the pros on the integral boots, they are quite difficult to lose. Not impossible, but quite difficult to lose. Why? Because they, close around the pastern and the lower leg of a horse has a conic shape and uh, they are super easy for owners they need no maintenance and they accept one centimeter pads but there are also cons they tend to be as a group each brand and model might have some differences between them in general as a family i repeat is that they are normally heavier if you compare it with the sport boots or with the gluons they are big and clumpy so you have what i call the double impact when the horse is moving the boot reaches the ground first and afterwards the hoof reaches uh, the, the sole of the boot in a second time. This creates some discomfort and some issues around the movement of the horse in that aspect. And also you have extra levers. Normally on the hoof boot world and barefoot trimmers and professional hoof care practitioners, at least in my experience, they don't uh, take a lot into account the levers. This is a thing that a farrier has inside its DNA and all the pressures and all these things that can create uh, extra tension on ligaments and tendons. And seems like in the barefoot world, we put a hoop boot and that's it. We forget about all the levers and all the snack feet and all these tensions and ligaments and tendons. And I don't know, maybe because I have a different approach. I have all this stuff into my mind and it's an important thing for me. I am mechanically, they are quite bad or quite poor. Why? Because they interfere in the extension and in the flexion of the pasterns uh, during the movement and during the gait. This affects the lower leg biomechanics and at least are more affected than uh, when you are using a sport boot or a glue-on boot. Uh, that's why I say that they are some uncomfortable uh, for the horse or because or related to those aspects. And uh, there are no replacements. So for the owner, when something breaks, he or she has to change the whole boot. And some of those boots come in pairs. So uh, they have to change uh, the whole set. Uh, and normally sport boots a lot of times comes in units. But as I say, it is only a general approach because every brand and type might vary a bit. Okay, and finally, we go to the last and fourth family of boots, the pros and cons that are the sport boot. Our Evo boot uh, 2021 fills in this category. So uh, 
which are the pros and cons of them as a family. Normally, the biomechanics are very good. That's why we classify them as a sport boot or at least are better than the integral boots and not as good as the glue-on boots, mainly because they, are, they have some part of the boot that goes above the coronet and touches the skin. So they are quite comfortable for the horses. Again, far more comfortable than the integral boots and a little bit less comfortable than the glue-on boots. They are light or they are meant to be light and they are designed to have a snack fit. So these do not create lever levers or at least this is the mindset that we should have when we use these type of boots. As I said, this is a family and some sport boots can be modified and some others cannot be modified. And this might vary a little bit the levers and the tensions on the tissues of the lower leg. And they can also accept pads, some of them. Uh, normally the pads that they can accept is five millimeters. So normally for a sport boot is more than enough but they also have some cons. And normally those sport boots are a little bit more technique for owners or at least more technique than integral boots. And this means that some owners might say, mm, this is uh, too technical or too difficult for me. Just give me one of those that opens a lot and I can fit it without watching. It can be a con because it needs that the owner knows a little bit more about how to move around the horse, how to pick up the leg, how to put uh, himself or herself uh, to catch a hoof and fit the boot. So, but you already know that because you're a pro and you deal with this day to day. Okay, so also they need some maintenance mainly because some of them uh, come with screws or also other type of methods to adjust it like uh, wires or velcros and those things need some maintenance that the integral boot normally don't and they need a snack fit and uh, it can be a problem because if they are not adaptable you can find they cannot be used in a horse mainly because of the shape of the hoof that uh, this horse has and the last con is that those sport boots need the, that the hoofs stays always on shape and the internal boots, because they don't have a snack fit, they have a little bit more of clearance. So they have a little bit more of margin and uh, the hoops can grow or distort a little bit more in between trims. But with the sport boots, the hoof has to be stable and has to stay always on shape and it can be a con in some situations as you already know so okay this is all about the uh, boot types pro and cons that i wanted to share with you i also want to share how to choose a boot nobody explains uh, this to us a lot of times how to choose a boot as a professional what i have to check what i have to be aware of i have just to have in mind the hoof it's also the horse important. It's also what the perspectives of the owner. And yes, everything, it's a cocktail. You as a professional have to have everything in mind. Uh, so it enables you to take decisions and say, okay, I go for that boot or for this other boot. Let me explain you a little bit more of at least what I do when I have to choose a boot for a specific case. The first thing that I have in mind is the owner's objective. So what do the owners want to do with the horse and the boots if it's light work you can use integral boots or sport boots but if it's long duration work trail riding for hours or endurance training or endurance riding or uh, it's short time but a lot of intensity then i always go to sport boots mainly to diminish the risk of injury and Enhancing horses comfort. For me, horses comfort and biomechanics are the most important thing because I want the horse to use boots if there's a need of, but I want the boots to affect the horse as less as possible. And as I already said before, this is a thing that we don't have always in mind as professionals. And that's why I'm putting a little bit more of emphasis on repeating that because levers, snack feet, biomechanics, breakover point, all this is super important. Those are things that good farriers have always in mind. I see trimmers do a super job in the hooves, uh, assessing the diet and giving tricks to the owners to help them improve the horse situation. But then when it comes to boots, uh, the level diminish a lot. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's why I'm making a little bit more of emphasis on that. 
So the second thing that I have in mind while choosing a boot is horse and hoof condition. If it's a horse that uh, I have taken the horseshoes out and owner has not any hurry, so it can wait, then I can use internal boots or sport boots depending on some other factors, mainly the hoof shape and all other things that I will explain you in a few minutes. And the second thing is that the, if the horse has been recently unshot but the owner is in a hurry, then I glue on. And if the horse uh, has a pathology that needs some orthopedy, and yes, we can do orthopedy with boots, and I have been doing it for years with very good results. And this is a thing that I will explain at the end. And this is a thing that normally in the barefoot world is forgiven. For those horses that need some orthopedy, then I work on gluons, for boots, and you will see at the end why. And then for those boots, for those horses, sorry, that needs some orthopedy 24-7, then I go for internal boots, mainly because I can use pads and they are happy and they are not bruised or they don't have any skin issue wearing the boots 24-7, then internal boots are okay. And if they have troubles, then I go to the gluons. Okay, the third uh, factor I have in mind while choosing a boot for a specific case is uh, the owner's hands ability and the degree of implication. So if the horse owner is not handy at all and uh, he or she don't like the boots and don't like playing around boots, then I go easy, go to internal boots. And maybe with the time the owner evolves and says, hey, I'm ready to go for a boot that has more advantages for my horse. So I'm ready to go to a sport boot because I'm confident. So those things happen uh, a lot of time to me. And I'm sure that happens to you also. So normally if it's a new owner uh, or don't want to be around boots, internal boot works perfect. But if you have the opposite, so you have a handy owner, very implicated and uh, want to learn a lot of things about boots and uh, uh, doesn't mind to put a screw back or make some adjustment or something like that, then I go for boot. Okay, the fourth thing that uh, I have in mind and I wanted to share with you in this presentation uh, is the professional knowledge. So in this case, my knowledge, no? My knowledge, uh, my handability, and my, my implication as a professional. Uh, I see out there a lot of professionals that they don't even like boots. I have seen a lot of professionals that don't like boots. I have seen a lot of professionals that they are not handy on boots. And then they go always to internal boots because they are their choice. Maybe it's not the best for the horse or for the owner on that moment. This is a thing that we have to examine ourselves, see if we are always going easy or if sometimes we go easy, which is okay. And the opposite, there are a few uh, that are very handy, that really like boots, that really like to shape, transform, heat, put, glue, do a lot of things on boots. Then those professionals that want to go to perfection, that that watches this millimeter. No, this is a, a two millimeters air gap there. So it means that it's an extra level there and I don't want that to be there. Then uh, they go to sport boots, blue on boots, and always, sometimes, they also use internal boots, okay? Which is okay. Using internal boots, sport boots, blue on boots, they are always tools to use, but <clears throat> you have to decide when and why to use it. Okay, but there are more things when I'm choosing a boot for a specific case. So um, the, another thing that I have in mind is the hoof shape because one thing is the measurements and the other thing is the hoof shape. There are two things that are important, the hoof shape between trims and the hoof shape per se. No? So uh, the hoof shape between trims, if the horse maintains a stable shape, then four boots is a good option. If the hooves changes a lot in between trims, then you go to an internal boot, because if not, the owner will need two different sizes of sport boots. Sometimes that will work for the owner, and will say to you that he's very happy doing it, but at least a lot of my clients, they say, no, 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 I cannot pay that much, so I prefer to stay with one pair of internal boots, which is okay. And the hoop shape, I divide the hoop shape into what we call standard, short, compact, beveled, low heeled, between 45 
47 and 64 degrees and all this. Okay, so if the horse has a standard shape, hooves, you can use all of them. If they are not standard, so they have some weird, down here in the presentation, you can see all the types of and all the variety and the deformations that hooves can have in the different views or perspectives. So if the hooves have one of those or <laughs> various of them, then normally you can go to integral boots or glue-on boots that are adaptable. Not all glue-on boots can be heat adapted. So the ones that are heat adaptable uh, will be able to fit on those conditions. And some sport boots are also heat adaptable and they can be used on those conditions. Evo boots, because are mainly designed by me, uh, who is a, a, a you know, a trimmer and a pet, and I have the same issues and problems as you in my daily basis. I thought in a way to create a perfect fit on all conditions. And that's what I'm going to explain you when I'm done with this bit. But we are already done, so it's ending. This is the third layer about choosing a boot for a specific case. So what else I have in mind when I'm choosing a boot for a specific case? Well, another thing is the boot size and shape. Not all the brands and models have the same shape. Some are more round, some are more oval, some have both options. So you have to study and know every brand that you are gonna work with and know if it's gonna fit or not and if they can be adapted or not. And also the sizing, if the size of the boot will fit the hoof that you have in front. And also another thing and this is the last thing on this chapter. So it's the boots design, the adaptability and the adjustment possibilities that offers a boot that you are going to use. This is important because there's a huge variety. When I began, we had only two brands in the market. And now I think that there are 10 or something like this. And some brands have uh, more than one model. So it's a market that is growing and uh, there's a lot of brains thinking and creating new solutions. You have to be up to date as a professionals and uh, have in mind the boot design. Why this boot is designed that way, which are its pros, its strengths, and which are its uh, cons or weaknesses. So just as a reminder, the integral boots as a family compromises the lower leg biomechanics and the horse safe gait to enhance the comfort for the owners. They are not adjustable and not adaptable. Okay. The Gluons offers the best biomechanics, safety, and comfort for the horse and the owner. They are totally adaptable, but you know already that you have the problems with crush and uh, wall weakening on all these things. Four boots are in-between solution that uh, compromises a little bit the owner's comfort, but for one reason, to enhance the horse biomechanics and comfort. Some of them have some capacity to be adjusted and some others, a few, have also the capacity to be adapted or transformed. But it depends on the brand and the model. I hope that you enjoyed and you learned something about boots in general. But we are here for a reason, and uh, I also have to talk about the Evo boot. So those are uh, the sport boots that you can find in the market nowadays, more or less. So uh, the Renegades, Swiss Gallopers, Flex, Coots, uh, Flooring, Easy Cares, and Evo Wood, okay? I have a couple of questions Sorry. that have been coming in. This is back from when you were talking yeah. about the blue ones. He, Anthony wanted to know if you could cut the triangle on the bottom of the boot out to help, I guess, with thrush. And then he also wanted to know what glue do you recommend for gluing? Okay, you can cut and you can do a lot of things because it's simply a material that you have to learn to work and play around with. But uh, in my experience, opening a hole in the sole, it's not a very good solution for thrush, mainly because you will have some air coming in, but not in the spots that um, are more susceptible to develop thrush. And you will also have a lot of rocks, mats, dirt, shit going in. So it means that the owner has to keep on cleaning them. So for me, the best option put some antiseptics on the sole and then I glue on the boot and then I make sure that I will have the thrush under control. And uh, about the glue, 
<laughs> well, there are a lot of different brands in the market. There are some that works better than others and some that are more expensive than others. Normally, which is the problem? The problem is that the glue is the most expensive part of the glue on process. There are several brands that has its own glue that works well and it's cheaper. That's why we as Evo Horse have our own glue. Okay, another question that somebody had was about Loctite. Can you or should you put Loctite on the screws? Okay, <laughs> this is a thing that I will go a little bit into it. Uh, when I begin to talk about the boot, <laughs> because okay. I, I haven't started yet. Uh, but um, just as a fast answer, it's not a must. If you want, it's a recommendation. It's a good thing to use. You can use a specific Loctite for screws. So if you need, you will be able to uh, get the screw undone. The screws normally, they don't get undone. But obviously, it's a screw and a nut, and it can happen. So if you're happy with applying some specific Loctite for um, screws, it's okay. Thank you. Okay, let's gonna talk about the Sport Boot family and the Evo Boot more specifically. So the Evo Boot is created with separate parts. There's a reason, and the reason, the main reason is that the owner or the professional can change everything. So uh, if a part is worn out or it's broken for some reason because a horse has stepped or a rock has cut something, then the owner don't have to buy the whole lot again. So the, it's uh, as simple as uh, buying the piece <clears throat> and replacing it, which is also good for you as a professional because you can charge a fee for the maintenance and for changing the parts. If the owner is handy and wants to do it, as you will see in this presentation, it's super easy. It's simply removing a screw and putting it back. So the different parts and simply to speak in the same language, we have a base, some other brands called Shell. It's okay, it's the same. The second skin, that it's um, a layer that is in contact with the skin and that it's super fine neoprene with some holes for breathing. Then we have the last stop direct, that it's a revolutionary locking system and a very misunderstood locking system, but I'm gonna explain a little bit more of it in the future. And also the bulb shield or gator, and then the screws, the metal pieces. Okay, so those are the main parts. Let me explain you a little bit the features what makes the Evo Boot so different from others. There are some things that are in common and there are some things that are super different from other boots. And in my point of view or my perspective goes one step ahead. So the profile is a little bit higher than the rest of the boots. If it's too high because you have a super short hoop, you can trim it down, okay? But we made it a little bit higher to um, make it safer and diminish the risk of losing the boot. You have more surface in contact with the hoof. Also, the tip is reinforced. If the horse is dragging a little bit or simply by the breaking over, a hole appears. So that's why we reinforced a little bit to see to make it more durable. Also, the material is super, super durable. It's TPU, high pressure injection, and ultra resistant to wear. You have to think that it's 98 shores, which is the most resistant plastic to wear. So it's a boot that lasts a lot. Why? Because not only because of the plastic, also because the sole is one centi centimeter thick. A lot of, a lot of times I, I get the question, Albert, can I use pads on it? Yeah, but you have one centimeter of thick sole, so the horse will not get hurt if it's hypersensitive. They go super comfortable with them, so why you want to put another layer in between them? Uh, you have also a lot of screws, so you can adjust it to different conformations because you already know that hoofs come in many shapes and angles and widths and big pasterns and small hoofs, small hoofs and big pasterns. Uh, big hooves and uh, small bulbs and big bulbs and small hooves, huge varieties. So we need something to make it adjustable to each hoof and we did it through screws for us is the simpliest way to do it. And then the elastic stop system, I'm gonna explain something else uh, in the future. So. Also, one thing that is super important, at least for me, and one thing that nearly nobody asks is the breakover point. Where is the breakover in this 
boot. How many boots have you cut by half? And you have seen the breakover point if it's in its correct position or not. I'm sure that, that you have not done it. <laughs> and the first thing that I do with a boot, when a new model appears, I buy it, I test it, I try it, I see the strengths and the weaknesses of every boot, and I cut it by half, and I see how it's designed, see where is the breakover, see everything, because then I'm going to use this boot into a hoof. I'm going to apply this boot into a horse. And I have to make sure that what I'm recommending and what I'm using is the best for the horse at any time. The breakover point. The breakover is super important. So as you can see in the image in your lower left, the breakover is exactly where it has to be when the horse is barefoot. Okay. Okay. Also, on the sole, what do we have that it's a little bit different? Okay. We have the B-shape. We were in the floating boots, the first manufacturers that created the B-shape. So we introduced the B-shape into the boots world. But floating boots have holes in the B-shape, but it's not a trouble because floating boots has a pad glued on the sole. So those holes are not a hole because they have another layer glued on the top of it. So when we designed the Evo boot, we thought first on putting also holes on it, but the holes are a weak point. So then mud goes in, rocks breaks it. So we have to find another solution, a different solution to make this B-shape work. And this B-shape is designed to do exactly what the frog does, distort horizontally and longitudinally. So with the accordion that we have in the B-shape, we make sure that the boot can do the both movements and all the movements between the angular movements that the barefoot hoofs needs to do when they go over an uneven terrain. Okay, it can be sandy terrain or it can be rocky. Then these designs uh, gets in action. You can see also the grip. It's a medium grip. It's a not very aggressive. So it's an intermediate grip. You can go on the wet grass. Yes, but <laughs> with caution, okay? Uh, because you are not wearing a stats. But you can also apply stats, not only ice stats, you can apply big stats, four centimeter stats. We have a professional that has been with me for a time as a student. That it's in the Northern Europe, in Finland. They are nearly half of a year over ice. And um, he uses four centimeter stats on the EVOs. And they are able to accept these type of stats because of one centimeter thick soap and dense material. Okay. We have the second skin. This is an old, an old version. Sorry, I didn't have time to update this bit of the presentation, but it's mainly the same. Okay? In the past, it was also made of plastic. Now it's neoprene. It's also super fine, super soft and gentle with the skin. And it's also anti-rubbing. And it has also holes. So we make sure that the skin can breathe uh, if there's a lot of sweat. And as you might already know, one of the other big differences that Evo boot has is the arched sole. It's the only boot in the market that has an arched sole, a concave sole. And why we have this? We have this because we wanted to mimic the hoof movement or distortion when the horse interacts with the ground. So we wanted really to make like a second small layer of hoof that acts like the same hoof of the horse. In other words, we really wanted to do a glove, okay? But I don't want to say glove because in the hoof boot market we say glove, everyone has an image, but I'm not relating to that product. I'm relating of, a, of really a, a glove that, um, that has no inter interference with, uh, with the hoof movements. So it also creates a super nice thing because when the horse steps and the arch sole comes flat, the boot closes to its center. This also diminishes uh, a bit the risk of losing the boot. This is the Evo boot in action. So all the parts of the boot has been designed to let the hoof do the two main movements or distortions that it has the expansion and the longitudinal distortion. As you can see, there are two needles here in this video, one attached to the frog spine and the other attached to the V-shape of the boot chill, the gator. And as you can see, the, uh, the boot moves or mimics the uh, hoof 
uh, movement. And it also happens the same with expansion because of the B shape of the bulb shield that you can see also here in the video and the accordion design of the sole, of the B shape of the sole. So it also happens the same with the expansion, but it's more difficult to, to show. Okay, so there's uh, still one thing to say that I haven't said, so let me add it here before uh, explain all these things, is the elastostop, because this is one of part of the boot that is really revolutionary and very different uh, with other boots, and the elastostop is designed in a way that permits the expansion and uh, gain of volume of the soft tissues of the back part of the hoof. So when the horse steps on the ground and pushes down all its weight, as you already know, lateral cartilages moves outwards and the digital cushion gets compressed and also moves out outwards and backwards. So this back part of the hoof needs space to work properly. If we don't give space, if we create our pressure on the lateral cartilages, or we create a rigid locking system that prevents these hoof tissues to move, expand, and earn volume, then we will affect directly the blood flow. And if we affect the blood flow, then we have free energy. And when we have free energy, this free energy has to go somewhere. It doesn't disappear. So uh, where this free energy goes, ligament, joints, tendon, bones, depend on the conformation of the horse. Each horse has a weak spot on its lower leg, so the free energy will go there and will break it somehow. So the blood flow, it's super important. We know that metal horseshoes and nails affect strongly the blood flow, but my question is, there are some hoof boots that also affects the blood flow? Have you ever thought about it? It's a, a question that I throw to you. Just for you to think a little bit because when we apply something about the hoof it will have some effect so our job as a professionals is to apply things that will create the less effect possible okay so the elastostop permits this permits the expansion and and the gain of the volume of the back part of the hoof why because it's oval this oval shape when the this back part of the hoof expands it becomes elongated until a point. That's why we call it elastostop, until a point that becomes rigid. Why? Mainly because the rigid locking systems, they don't let the hoof do this thing, and uh, systems that are too flexible, simply stretch, 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 and uh, you have risk of losing the boot in high speeds or accelerations. So this is an in-between solution. It lets the back part of the hoof expands and gain space, but until a point that it stops and locks and becomes rigid. So this is why the last stop is uh, designed in this way. And we are now only producing this uh, last stop that is what we call the elastic stop direct. And uh, we have also reinforced it in the last version of the Evo boot 2021. So, okay, now yes, now I think that I have said everything. Sorry, because uh, without having you guys in front, it's far more difficult for me to stay concentrated, focused, and uh, motivated. But I hope that you are enjoying this presentation, that you are learning things, that you are watching and seeing the boots in a different perspective, and that you are going to uh, take more attention on the small things that make the big differences. Okay, so, and this layer this, uh, is about that. I have already spoken about the features, but which are the benefits? Which are the benefits for the horse? Because there are three implicated pieces on this puzzle. One is the horse, second is the owner, and third is you as a professional. So, which are the benefits? Okay, so for the horse, ultralight. The Evo boot is super light. I'm not sure if it's the lightest in the market. I think that it's not. I think that it's the second one in the market, but it's very light. So, and being light is super important. You have to think that the uh, evolution of nature has been the last 60 million years taking way out of the lower leg. And then we go and we put a metal shoe that uh, weighs 500 grains, or we put a boot that is super heavy. 
What happens when we apply heavy things on the stream of an appendix on a leg? You have an acceleration and you have joint and ligament issues. So every time you choose a boot, have the weight in mind and always try to use the lightest option possible. So your boot is light and has been designed in a way to be as light as possible because we had this in mind, okay? Uh, also, the grip, the grip, as I said, it's excellent grip, it's very good grip, it's intermediate, so the horse has a very safe grip. And remember, it's sport boot, so we don't have double impact effect. So it's a snack, it's really like a second hoof, and the horse is super safe wearing them. Try, <clears throat> let the horse express a move, and you will see, really, you will see the difference. Okay, another benefit for the horse is that it's super flexible, as I have said. What's flexible? The sole is flexible, not only for the material, also for the design with the B shape and the accordion and the boot shield or the guiter. It's also flexible. Again, not only for the material, also because of the B shape, because there's a small B shape on the boot shield that permits the expansion and the diagonal movements, as you have seen. Uh, and also the sole is arched, is curved. So everything together, the elastostop, everything has been designed to work together, to be flexible. And this enables the hoof distortion and the hoof mechanism. We are not creating free energy. We are not affecting the blood flow. And for me, as a designer, as a manufacturer, is super important. Okay, there are no straps, no pastoral straps. And why is this important? Why is this important? There are a lot of, uh, of you guys, professionals, that I'm sure that you never thought uh, which is the effect of a pastoral strap. Maybe yes, but in my experience, I have done seminars with a lot, hundreds, hundreds of uh, professionals, mainly professional focused on barefoot. And they, they don't think on weight, they don't think on breakover, they don't think on flexibility and hoof mechanism, they don't think on pastoral straps. Why not having a pastoral strap is good for a horse? Because don't interfere in the pastoral movement of the lower leg when the horse is fully extending the leg or fully flexing the leg. Uh, don't get me wrong, pastoral strap is good to maintain the boots in place. You can use it sometimes for some reasons if you have to go on mat or in a very slippery terrain or uh, very uneven or with uh, very fast changes of accelerations, then you can use a pastoral strap. Also, you can use it in EVOs, but if you can use them without pastoral straps, it's always better because the horse will move far more freely. Okay, <clears throat> so another thing, no lateral cartilages pressure. If you see the design, there's no lateral cartilages pressure. Other brands, other models creates a lot of lateral cartilage pressure. And there are others that don't, don't get me wrong. It's a thing to have in mind. And we made sure that the EvoBoot does not create pressure on the cartilages so we don't affect the blood flow. And also uh, the benefit is that uh, with heat adaptation and with the adjustment, you can make a perfect fit. So you make sure that you don't have extra levers. So you have less risk of injury and safer movement and, and comfort for the horse and for the owner. For the owner, it's, uh, you have a high density TPU. So you have a very durable material. So they will save money using these type of boots that are highly durable. Uh, well, different colors, enables combination with other equipment and exchangeable parts that I already spoke about it. So it's less money because you can change only a part and not a whole lot. And because uh, the horse has less risk of injury, they spend less money on treatments and rehabilitations. And for you as a professional, guys, which are the benefits from that features? It's heat adaptable. For me, as a professional, it's super important that a boot that I use, it's adaptable by heat or by any other way. The Evo boot, it's heat adaptable. So with a torch or with a heat gun, you can heat it and make it fit nearly any shape. So you make sure that there are no air gaps, there are no extra levers, and there are no bad things going on down there. Also, you can offer an extra service, sizing, adjusting, and replacing. So you can charge a little bit more, so you have a little bit more of gain. And this is the thing 
that you have to do. You have the knowledge. You are taking the responsibility of saying to the owner, the best boot for you is this boot and this size is the one that will fit. And once you get it, then I will adjust it, adapt it. And if something breaks, I will replace it. So you offer an extra service. So you have a little bit more of gains from more margin. Also, we offer good margins for professionals. Boots are not like, like sunglasses or something like this, that you can have 300% of margin. No, no, this doesn't happen with hoop boots. Uh, your boots are made with uh, very good materials that they are made in Europe, so no China or Asia stuff. Margins are good, but we cannot offer margins like sunglasses. But you already know that. If you have been using boots for a while, you already know that. And uh, you can contact me at any time if you have any doubt, trouble, application that you are unsure because I have a lot of experience dealing with all boots in general and EU boots in particular in the last years. I can give you guidance on the specific issue or doubt that you have. Okay, so the four things, four processes that we can do with uh, EU boots that it's sizing, adjusting, adapting, and transforming. I hope that you are curious on what can be done and how to do it. Let's go. The first thing that it's sizing, how to size the Evo boot. Okay, the, my recommendation is, man, if you are a, a professional, then you have to go for a fit kit. But not talking about Evo boots, talking on any other boot brand. Go and buy a fit kit. Why using a fit kit is so important because you are having in mind the three dimensions. With a measuring tape, you only have in mind the length and the width but you don't have in mind the shape. Where is the widest part of the hoof? Is there any flare? Is there anything that it's out of the standard? Go and buy a fit kit of all the brands that you want to work with. <clears throat> These are uh, three situations of sizing without a fit kit that I am gonna explain super fast. You can see here a horse that is quite standard. It's uh, quite short, but quite compact, a little bit, super small flare because this horse uh, has been without shoes for a short period of times, four to five months. And you have the measurements here and you see that the width and the length match in the same size. So no issue, it's easy, size four. Second uh, example, this is a hoof with uh, osteolysis tip of the P3. So you have this thrush and this crack uh, because of that, you can you also have some stress rings and some flaring, and in the measurements you can see that the width falls into the size three W. But what about the length? This hoof is super short but super wide. So what we do on this case? Okay, the most important thing is to cover the width, and then we simply shorten the boot until it meets the needs of the hoof. So what I will do? I will go for a three W because it covers the width, or I will go for a three and heat it up, it, make it wider and make a perfect fit. And then I will chop off the excess material on the length. So second example on sizing and the third and last example. Here, there's another history. You I'm sure that you have seen a lot of hoops like this. This is a horse that has been shot for long and it has the typical deformation of those cases. So it's not round, it's super oval, quite migrated because the widest part of the hoof has migrated forward and you also have stress rings, but the wall is quite straight to the ground. But let's go to the measurements. So you have two options here with the width and the length. If you can use either the 1W and the 2 because it looks like that it's in between. So what should we do on those cases? Normally you go for a small size and then you heat it up and you make it bigger. It's always when you use heat adaptation, it's always better to take a smaller boot, heat adapt it and make it bigger. Make it smaller, it's not impossible, but takes a lot of skill and a lot of time. So why should I do it if making it bigger only takes a few seconds? Okay, so have in mind that you should work with a boot that can be heat adapted to be able to cover all these variety of hoofs. Also about sizing, but now sizing with fit kit. As I already said to you and explained to you, when you are using a fit kit and you are using a shell or a base or a name that you prefer to use, you can directly apply it on the hoof. So you see where's the air gap. You see where's the problem. 
Is the angle too low? Is the angle too high? There is, is there a flare? Is there a, a crookedness? The hills are too high or too low? What's, what's going on there? So you see everything when you are applying the shell directly to the hoof. So that's why I mainly recommend you. You're a professional, get a fit kit. When you are applying a fit kit of any boot, this is a thing that uh, goes beyond the Evo boot. These are the three situations that you can have. You can have a hoof that has a higher angle than the boot. You can have a boot that has the similar angle than the hoof. And you can have the hoof that has a lower angle than the boot. So what will you do on the situations? If you have a boot that is not adaptable, you are not going to be able to deal with it. So simply on those situations with heat adaptation, you solve this issue in a few minutes, okay? If the angle of the hoof is higher, with some heat, it will go to place super easy, super easy transformation. If it's similar angle, you don't need to do anything. And if the hoof have a very low angle because as an underground heels or something like this, then you will have to work a little bit more, cut the wall on the tip, Hit it, overlap both lips and diminish or lower the angle to match the angle of the hoof. When you are using a fit kit, you are thinking and you are watching and knowing what should I do to make this boot fit perfectly. Okay, in another perspective, it can happen that you have a boot that is too narrow. I see that sometimes in some brands that the sole cannot get ex expanded by heat or by, by other technique. I see the first situation. And what we are creating here is a full rolling effect without knowing it. So if you want to apply a full rolling because you are searching for a specific way of moving, it's good. But if not, it might be bad. It can be that it's too narrow. It's just similar, so perfect, but it's too wide. So with the Evo boots, if it's too narrow, you hit the B-shape and you make it wide. If the boot is too wide, you cut the B-shape by its half, you hit it, your lap lips, and you fuse them, and you have make it narrow. And it only takes a few minutes, a little bit of a skill on heat adaptation, and a few minutes of your time. And also in the length. So if it's too long, you take it out with a grinder, or even with a rasp. If it's similar, if there's no anything to do. And if it's too short, then you have to go to a bigger size. Normally, if it's too short, what I do is I go to a bigger size and then I make it narrower and problem solved. Easy. These situations, the three situations on the angle, on the width, on the length that I have shown you, it happens with any boot of the market. There are things that you have to have in mind when applying and using boots, hoof boots. Those are the two different situations that we can find in the field as professionals uh, normally what we call the non-standard shaped hoofs and the standard shaped hoofs and you can see how the you would can adapt to both situations one it's a foundered horse with a medilateral problem and super flared if you are using a non-adaptable boot you cannot fit this type of horse so you will end up using an integral boot which might be okay but maybe the horse is stable and you can offer it a sport boot and it will be far more comfortable with it. So I have already covered the sizing on EO boots, but also really on any type of boot. But there are more things that can be done with EO boots. You can also adapt them. How do we adapt them in the field? Normally with heat and or with a grinder or a rasp. You can change the length so you can make it longer simply by heating the tip. You can make it longer or you can make it shorter by removing the excess on the back part of the boot. You can also change the width so you can make it narrower by cutting the B-shape on a half, overlapping both lips and hitting it and fusing the material. And no worries because it will not break. Okay? The material is super, super, super good. So in every seminar that I have done with professionals and farriers, I always take the biggest one, the strongest one. I do the procedure, I make it narrower, and I give the boot to him and I say, okay, try to break it. And they are not able to do it because if you do correctly the process, it will not break. You can make it wider simply by hitting the V-shape or narrower by overlapping and fusing the material. 
Also, you can change the angle of the boot. You can make it more steeper by heating the material and, and fitting it into the hoof, or you can also make it lower by using the same technique as making narrower. So you have to cut the boot by its half, overlap both lips, heat and pierce the material, and you will lower the angle, okay? You can also change the height. Mainly you can make it lower, trimming the upper bit for those cases with the hooves that are uh, very short. Here comes a small clip on the adaptation so you can see the process. Okay, so first of all, let me explain you some basics. Heat adaptation works in an outwards direction, which means that to achieve the best results, you should work with a shell that fits super, super tight, or even with a shell a half size smaller, that might look impossible to fit. So it's always better to make a smaller shell bigger than the opposite. You can choose to heat the whole boot or only focus your heat on the spot that you want to modify. If there are several things that you want to modify, you can do it in one go or in several steps. When using the heat, don't stay still, keep on moving your heat source and stop when the plastic begins to shine. If you insist, you will see bubbles appearing if, and if you keep on doing, you will finally melt the material. Having that said, let's go to the details of each modification. I will organize them depending on its difficulty. So the first six, making it steeper, wider, lower, shorter, three millimeters longer and mimicking an existing flare are quite easy to do and nearly everyone can do it. Making it more than three millimeters longer has an intermediate difficulty and being a handy person is advised. Finally, lowering the angle and making it narrower, it's only for pros. Those four modifications can be achieved with the same procedure. You can heat the area or the whole shell, fit it on the hoof when warm, leaving the horse step on it and letting it cool down. It's as easy as it sounds. Those two modifications are also very easy to do. It's as simple as taking a grinder and wearing out the material that you don't want. To do so, you should remove the tip reinforcement first with a grinder and then follow the same pressure as I explained before. So, heating the area, filling the shell into the hoof and leaving the horse stepped on it until it cools down. I'm gonna give you a trick here because to force the situation, a lot of times what I do is do the process with the bulb shield attached. So I do everything in one go. To achieve that goal, we should cut the boot with a knife or similar, overheat the area until it begins to melt, overlap both lips, fuse them with the fingers and maintain everything in this position by hand or using a press until it cools totally down. I hope that everything about the adaptation, mainly heat adaptation and grinder use, it's solved and you have no doubt about it. As you can see, it's quite easy and very, very fast to do. And it really makes a huge difference when you heat adapt the boot and make a perfect fit for a horse and make sure that there are no levers and no air gaps. Let's go to the third thing that you can do with the EVO boot that is adjusted. So once I have the appropriate size, then I check if there's a need of heat adapted. If there's a need, I do it. And once I have the proper shape on the boot, then I adjust it. So this is the normal process that I do in my daily work when I'm using EVOs. So there are some tricks here and some differences that makes uh, people get lost. And they are super easy if you understand how the boot works. The first thing that you have to understand is that the Elastostop Direct is a secondary closing system. I repeat it again, it's a secondary closing system. 
I see a lot of people that think that the last stop is the primary locking system and they put it super tight. You are going to break the boot, you are going to lose it. It's not designed to be used in this way. So how should we use it and why is designed that way? On this layer of the presentation, you can see that there's some space between the boob shield and the boobs region. The most appropriate thing is that you have the minimum space possible. So you have an intimate contact between the boob shields and the lower strap. Okay, you have to make sure that the space between the lower strap and the bulbs has an intimate contact. If you don't have this, what happens when the hooves accelerate inside the boot because it's going through a very steep road or is changing the phase very fast? The hoof will slide inside the boot and will have this gap that you have left there to rotate and you will lose the boot or you will break it. This is the primary locking system of the boot. So you have to make sure that this lower strap is tight. And this is what happens a lot of times. Users don't know how to fit a boot properly with both hands. Then what happens is that they leave this band very loose. So it's easier to get in the boot. And then they tight a lot the elastostop direct. Uh, and they think, okay, I tied as much as I could, so then it will work. Mac, no, failure. It will not work because you have a big animal, a hoof, that is far away from the body, so it accelerates a lot, uh, and it's contacting with the ground, so you have scissor levers and uh, dynamics, and opposite direction dynamics, the, the boot is not able to deal with it. So leave the lower strap of the bulb shield as close as possible and make a very snack fit because this is the primary closing system okay these are the different holes that we use to move the bulb shield back and forward you have three positions a b c and you have two sides one side and the other side and you can see the interaction here between the both pieces on your right part of the screen but if the horse is uneven and has one bull that is bigger than the other or one bull that is forward than the other, you can also mimic this on the boot. So there's no need that both sides are the same, symmetric. If the hoof is asymmetric, you can make the boot asymmetric to create a perfect fit. It comes again about the levers and pressures and tensions. If the hoof is asymmetric, it will need an asymmetric boot. And that's what you can do uh, with the uh, e-wood. Okay, the second piece, and really the last piece that uh, you will have to adjust is the elastostop direct, okay? And the pivot, that it's the screw that goes on the shell. So there are two things important, the angle and the tension. You want to have the angle as much horizontally as possible, okay? Sometimes, if you have a case that this bit is way too up and has a risk to interact too strongly with the skin, then what we do is we take this screw and we change it and we put it here. So we create a lowering pressure on that part of the boob shield that we call the ear of the boob shield and we release this area. So we diminish the risk of rubbing. Okay, that's why you have those holes here. But as a general rule, try to put it as horizontally as possible. Totally horizontal is impossible, so and a slight angle, because if not, you can have incidents here in that region. Okay, and the second thing is the tension. This is the most important thing. The angle is important, but the tension is super important. As I have already said, this is a secondary locking system. So it don't has to be super tight, has to lose a little bit and that's it. That's totally enough, okay? Because the primary locking system is the lower strap. Let's move forward. Perfect, so small video here. Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to adjust the Evo Wood 2021 to make it fit your horse's conformation. If your horse has what we call standard hooves, so short, compact, non-flared, 50-something degrees in angle, 
the standard configuration that I showed in the video how to assemble your Evo boots will surely work for you. But as you know, hooves comes in many sizes, shapes, angles, making it sometimes difficult for non-adjustable boots to fit all this variety. That's why Evos are totally and easily customizable. So let me show you how to adjust your Evos in five easy steps. Step number one, adjusting the length. This is the first and most important step to let your Evos work at its best and is as easy as changing the bulb shield's position through the holes on the sides until you find a combination that keeps the inner side of the bulb shield's base in intimate contact with the horse's heels. Notice that if your horse's bulbs are not symmetric, the bulb shield could also be placed asymmetrically to fit your horse's singularity. Step number two, checking the height. In this step, you only have to make sure that the bulb shield's curve surpasses the highest point of your horse's bulbs, like this. Notice that if you own a horse with high heels, you should use one screw per side and simply roll or pivot the bulb shield up so it can reach the appropriate length. Step number three, checking the bulb shield's ears, angle and height. Ideally, the bulb shield's ears should sit flat or parallel to the lateral cartilages and stay below the interphalangeal joint, like I'm showing here. If they have an incising angle against the skin, like now, my recommendation is to change the pivot's position to the second row of holes, like this. If, after doing so, it is still happening, normally means that the bulb shield that you are using is too small for your horse, and you should go up one size. Step number four, adjusting the elastostop's tension. Some users think that the elastostop is the EVO's main closing system, but it's not. In fact, the elastostop is only a secondary or emergency locking system. The primary locking system is what you have done in the first step of this video, while keeping the bull shield's base in touch with the heels. Having that said, adjusting the elastostop's tension is very easy. You simply have to change the screw position until you feel a slight tension when closing it. Ideally, you should use the first and second holes, sometimes the third, but if you find yourself using the fourth or the fifth hole, it means that the bull shield that you are using is too small for your singular horse. Step number five, cutting the excess and securing the screws. Once you have adjusted and tested your EVOs on few rides, you can cut the excess of the last stops, leaving only one extra hole and also you can secure the screws using Loctite 243 or any other glue designed for that purpose. As you have seen, adjusting your EVOS is super easy and takes only a few minutes. I hope that all the adjustment process is clear. As you can see, it's quite easy. You have three screws per side that uh, permits you managing the length and also the secondary locking system that is the uh, elastic of the rex. So it's super easy. And when you understand how it works, it's done super fast. Okay, so we are entering to the last bit of this presentation. Yippee! Thank you for uh, staying with me all this time. For me, it's the best bit because it's the bit that nobody talks about and uh, it's using boots on rehabilitation as an orthopedic resource. So let me show you what I do and when and why I do it and how can be achieved with the boots. Okay, so those are the different modifications that I do in my daily work. As you can see, there are five of it. Uh, you have a full rolling, you have a white toe, you have a white branch, it can be the medial or the lateral branch that you may white. You have an hospital plate and you have a wedged boot. So those are the five transformation options. Well, there's another one that it's not in this presentation, that it's a window on the tip that I do when the horse twists the boot. When you have a twister, <laughs> there are some horses that uh, due to its conformation, they are experts on twisting boots. Then you make a window on the tip. So you make the lateral sides of the boot behave like the horseshoe taps because the tip of the hoof will point out of the boot, which 
will alter the breakover. So you are bringing back the breakover artificially, but will prevent the turning. If the hoof is super round, then <laughs> there's nothing you can do, okay? Okay, so let me explain. When I use it, how I use it, and then you can ask some questions if you have it. Those are six, six issues that I deal with in my daily basis, and I'm sure that you deal with it too. The first thing and the most common is transition. As I already said, if the owner is in a hurry, then I glue on two or three cycles. I am able to reuse the same boots four times, as I already explained at the beginning. Also, if the owner is not in a hurry and the horse has a stable conformation, then I use a sport boot. Sometimes, if there's a need, I use, I use pads, but with Evos, I never use pads or nearly never use pads, okay? And then I adapt it and I adjust it if there's a need. If the owner is not in a hurry, but the hoof is an unstable conformation and will change with time, then I use integral boots. And a lot of times those horses are super, super sensitive because are pounded in some way. So then I apply pads because also the integral boots a lot of times don't have the thicker sole that has the evil boots, okay? And that's why I use one centimeter of pad. Also, the second pathology that I found the most in my region, founder. Uh, I'm quite sure that you have a lot of founder also in your clients. So if you have a horse in, an, in its acute phase of the foundering process, then I use gluons. I'm not a fan of using pads on the gluons or silicones because normally it creates an overpressure on the sole and the horse is more uncomfortable. So normally I only use gluons and because Evo boots have a very thick sole, one centimeter, horses are super happy. Okay. If the horse is in a chronic phase of the founder and needs boots 24 seven, then for the comfort of the owner and for being able to clean the hooves and maintain them healthy, I go for a integral boot with pads. If the horse has some rubbing problems, uh, then I go for gluons, okay? And if you have a founder that has perforated the hooves, and the uh, tip of the P3 is saying hello, then I glue on an hospital plate so I can take out the screws, I can clean everything and put back again the hospital plate and that's it. And I'm safe, horse is happy, comfortable, and everything is easy and fast. The third pathology that I found the most also is flexor tendon issues or navicular syndrome or podrocular syndrome which are the techniques or the transformations that I apply on those cases. If there's a flexion tendon issue, it's an acute process. If it's an avicular syndrome or podotrochlear syndrome, it's a more chronic. So normally for a flexor tendon issue, I go for a gluon and uh, for a navicular syndrome, I use normal boots. But what I do, I bring back the breakover and sometimes, I also uh, make a wedge, so I increase artificially the angle of the pasterns and I release the tension of the flexor apparatus. But I put more tension on the extensor uh, apparatus and on the tip of the hoof and on the lamina, okay? So you always have to think on what you are doing, what you are applying and why, and which will be the result. And you will not have the side effects wedging a boot that you have when you wedge a horseshoe and lower pressure on the heels and you have a lowering process on all the back part of the hoof and uh, you are diminishing the angle of the P3 because you are crushing the back part of the hoof, okay? This will not happen with the gluons because they are flat and you don't have these two different pressures. So when I find an extensor tendon issue, okay, what I do? Normally it can be acute or it can be chronic. In those cases, what I do is on the first phase, horse is on a place that cannot move a lot, normally during two weeks. So in this moment, there's no need to apply anything. Uh, when the horse begins to move after two weeks, I recommend to use a sport boot with a white toe on an arena. So this modification needs 
that the surface where the horse travels is soft. This will release the tension on the extensor tendons and we'll put a little bit more of tension on the flexor vectors and we'll enhance the rehabilitation on these areas because you will have a horse that can begin to move without putting pressure on the injured structures and then you can begin to increase. That's why I apply this white toe in a sport boot and not in a glue-on boot because the horse only needs it when it begins to walk. And normally in the first phase, the walking and the movement is restricted. So when you have a collateral ligament issues, what can we do with boots? We can help. A lot of times I see a horse has an injury in a collateral ligament or on a suspensory branch. The vet comes in and says, this horse has injured this uh, structure. You need the horseshoes. And then the owner don't know what to do. And a lot of times the trimmers say, no, 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 don't worry. Nature will do uh, its work. <laughs> okay, yes, nature always tries to improve the situations, but it's not always able to do it. So uh, we can also help inside our barefoot world with the boots. And we can say to the beds, hey, hey, wait a second, I can do it. I can apply a boot and the hoof will be also able to move to distort, to pump blood. So I will not have all these side effects of the horseshoe and uh, I can still help this horse with this situation. So how I do it when I find a collateral ligament issue or a suspensory branch, I put a white branch on the side that you have the injury. And <clears throat> this is also done in a sport boot. Why? Because this horse has a restricted movement and will only work on a soft arena or soft surface. If the horse has only access to hard surfaces, these modifications will not work. Okay, and the last problem is joint issues. There are a lot of joint issues in our daily uh, work related to diet and small paddocks, low base movement and other things. So uh, what can we do to help the horses? A full rolling. Normally, if it's very focused on the extensor process, then I simply bring back the breakover to diminish the levers and the tensions on that area and the horses are super happy with it. If it's a horse that is beginning to have uh, joint problems, then I use it in a sport boots. If it's a horse that has a very advanced pathology and that has troubles staying still, even walking in its paddock or something like that, then I apply a full rolling as a glue on. And those are the modifications that you have seen before that we call it the transformations and you can do it with the Evo boots. So you can help horses in their pathology. That's it. That's all. So we reached the end of the presentation. Here you have all the medias, my personal email. So if you have any doubt, any, any, yeah, any case that you say, hey, Albert, I have this case and I don't know what to apply or how to do it or just send me an image and uh, I can chat with you. And I always try to help. Okay. We have created this uh, business and this boot and uh, we keep on developing the boot and updating the boot to help the horses and to help this niche of people that want to keep their horse barefoot and we tried to make the best boot possible thank you for joining me uh, nice to meet you and uh, have a nice day i hope you enjoyed and uh, it has uh, been long <laughs> Two hours Thanks something. So much. Uh, but I, I think that it has been worth it. Yes. And I did my best and I try to share uh, with you guys a lot more than simply Evo Boot stuff. And um, so um, that's it. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Okay. Yes, have all of you. Great day. Bye bye. Bye bye.